Hi, ladies and gentlemen. It's Dr. Julian Avoa. So this is part two of part one and part two related to surgical clips. So I wanted to address specifically the use of surgical clips in GYN surgery. Now, it's not unusual for patients that undergo hysterectomies or laparos uh, laparoscopic surgery to undergo the uh, the placement of the removal of an organ and therefore the, the placement of a surgical clip to control bleeding. Now, mind you, that the use of surgical clips is done so in the majority of cases without the patient knowing that a surgical clip has been placed. So if you've had any type of GYN surgery, and surgery in general, there's a high possibility that uh, you have a surgical clip that's inside of your body that you have no idea that's there. And the only way that you're going to know that it's a surgical clip is there is to have an x-ray done, CT scan, MRI, and it'll be an incidental comment placed in the chart by your doctor, the radiologist, and it'll say surgical clip found here or there. Now, the key thing related to the surgical clips is this um, ridiculous concept in the medical field that the placement of a surgical clip is it's unnecessary to get your permission ahead of time because you've signed this blanket informed consent. And basically, an informed consent is giving the doctor permission to do something. But it can be so generalized that uh, in the informed consent, you can do something, that, another subject, is that uh, you in the informed consent, you can basically say that it's okay to have multiple doctors examine you. Uh, you can have doctors that are in training examine you, and that's a blanket statement and informed consent. Basically, you're allowing patient, uh, doctors to do pelvic exams on you without you or being aware that that's happening. Now, that's a separate subject. It still happens. Uh, it's a, a, a form of medical battery in the opinion of many people. I think that it's, it's uh, unethical to do that, but that's a separate subject, and you know that I've already talked about that, but I'm going to digress from the, from the subject matter. But the fact is the informed consent is really not there for uh, getting permission, is really not there because you have no idea that the doctor did something and put a surgical clip in your body, left a surgical clip in your body. Now, why do we use surgical clips? Well, surgical clips are relatively very easy to use. They, they avoid us having to tie a knot, so we can do a procedure much faster. It's much easier for us, and therefore we like to use surgical clips. I don't use surgical clips. I've never used surgical clips because I find them to uh, th the potential issues of the foreign body reaction. I prefer to tie a knot or use a device like the end seal, which uh, cauterizes a vessel. But nevertheless, let's just get to the point of surgical clips. So if you've had any type of GYN surgery, there's a good chance that you've had a surgical clip placed. And again, you won't, won't be able to tell that you've had one unless you have an x-ray, CT scan, MRI, or unless you're starting to have symptoms of a foreign body reaction, such as hair loss, cognitive changes, migraine headaches, uh, vision changes, excessive weight gain, uh, diabetes, uh, the uh, uh, symptoms of lupus, uh, pain in general areas, uh, and those are just some of the scratching the surface as far as foreign body reactions are concerned. So why is it that we're using surgical clips? It's because it's so easy to use. Why is it that they're not being taken off the market? It's because only a small percentage of patients have a, uh, have a reaction to a surgical clip. Now, a surgical clip can be made of titanium or nickel, a combination of alloys, but all of them will rust over time, so they oxidize and they release a uh, ions into the surrounding tissue which stimulate the farm uh, uh, the body to react against that and therefore can mimic autoimmune uh, symptoms so if you already suffer from hypothyroidism if you suffer from diabetes if you suffer from lupus you may your, your symptoms may get worse so let's suppose that you're removing the uterus now you remove the uterus for whatever reason but whether or not is in the majority of cases going to be medically indicated if you remove the uterus and you use a surgical clip, again, you may not even know that the doctor left one in there or put multiple ones. Because when you use a surgical clip, it's, it may be four or five or even ten that you're going to use. Uh, and those surgical clips uh, stop bleeding. They control bleeding. But they can also cause pain. They can cause this inflammatory response. They can cause the for formation of inflammatory cells called granulomas. And one of the most common um, issues or uh, uh, problems is going to be chronic pelvic pain associated with uh, leaving a surgical clip behind. Now, let's get to the second part of the commentary, having a hysterectomy. Having a hysterectomy is a very, very important decision to be made and many times has to be done for a variety of reasons. But when you remove the uterus, for reasons unknown to us, there is a possibility 
or probability that it's going to affect the overall hormonal function, your, the production of estrogen, uh, estrogen, uh, in your body. And that can cause a premature, uh, ovarian failure. So you can go through early menopause or have menopausal symptoms simply by removing your uterus. Now, if you remove the uterus and you remove an ovary, you have a significantly increased chance, usually between 15 and 20 percent chance, that you're going to have the other ovary fail. And if you have the other ovary fail, both of them failing means that you're probably going to go through early menopause. So what we do know is this. If you manipulate the, the ovary in any way, you can go through early menopause. If you remove the uterus, you have a, up to a 20% chance that you're going to go through menopause uh, or menopausal symptoms. So it's very important that you address those issues, concerns with your doctor if you're going to have the uterus removed and also remove the ovary. But even if you just have the uterus removed, you have a 20% chance, 15 to 20% chance that you'll start to have menopausal symptoms. So what is the point related to diabetes? We have found that, and I'm going to provide a link. The link is rather long, so please look at the bottom of my uh, post for the link. Cap, uh, uh, copy and paste it, and then take a look at it. So uh, basically, it's a, a, a presentation of a French study, having studied the 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 overall risk of uh, type 2 diabetes when you've had a hysterectomy. Now what they, they found is that even if you have a hist uh, hysterectomy done below the age of 40, you have an increased risk of developing diabetes. And definitely at the age of 45, you have a uh, sl uh, slightly higher increased risk of developing diabetes. And also, if you have the ovaries removed, you have an increased risk plus the hysterectomy, you have an increased risk of diabetes. Now, I've, I've addressed this point before. The fact of the matter is, don't get your uterus removed unless you have a really good uh, a reason. And this is an important subject matter related to Eshore, because in a significant number of cases, the uterus has to be removed because that's the best way to remove the Eshore. But what's key here is that the link between the, the risk of developing diabetes and the oophorectomy or the removal of the ovaries is, is this. I believe, and again, further studies have to be done. I believe that by removing the uterus, the ovaries are already starting to fail. You're falling into that 15 to 20% chance that the ovaries are failing. And even if you're starting to show symptoms of uh, premenopausal symptoms, to include depression and a lack of libido, sexual drive, that's probably an early sign that you're you're going through that menopausal change, which is also increasing your risk of type 2 diabetes. And then when you have the ovaries removed early, if you're having a hysterectomy plus the oophorectomy, you're going to be developing that risk of diabetes because you're, you actually have had a female uh, surgical castration. You're going to have all of the symptoms of the menopause, plus you're going to be having the risk, increased risk of, of type 2 diabetes. So it's so important, again, when I talk, my, talk to my patients and I tell you this, do not prophylactically remove your ovaries uh, unless they're absolutely, prophylactically means uh, just because to, to decrease your risk of ovarian cancer. I already addressed this point. The studies do not support, uh, yes, the removal of the ovaries does remove, uh, reduce your risk of ovarian cancer, but removing your ovaries prematurely also significantly increases your risk of so many other problems, including lack of sexual drive, the uh, early menopausal symptoms. In this particular situation, type 2 diabetes, depression, cognitive changes, Alzheimer, dementia, all of these things, uh, osteoporosis, all of these things. So uh, point number one, if you're going to have a hysterectomy, be aware of your type 2 diabetes risk. Point number two, don't remove your ovaries unless it's absolutely necessary. Point number three, be aware and ask your doctor, how was your uterus, how was your ovaries removed, were surgical clips used? And as a second side, side note, I would suggest that you make sure in writing that you say, you will not use surgical clips in my surgery under any circumstances. Keep all those, keep all those things in mind because if you have surgical clips plus you've had these surgeries, your risk of foreign body reaction significantly increases. And this is so important, so important. You're not going to find very many doctors that are willing to remove those surgical clips once they've been placed. You've already seen it in all of the other types of surgeries where they're there. Please do not agree to have surgical clips, pla surgical clips placed 
without remembering that it's very, very small chance that you're going to be able to have them removed later. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.